So by far the most asked question I get from you guys is when is the best time to visit Japan? And it's a pretty easy question for me to answer because the best time to visit by far is late September to early November in autumn in the fall. But rather than just talk about it, we're going to show you today what makes autumn so special by going out and staying at a thousand year hot spring resort about 30 minutes outside of Sendai. We are joined as always by our incredible chauffeur Ryotaro who's going to show us around. Chauffeur? I was like, well, you said incredible chauffeur. There's somehow like incredible and the chauffeur doesn't go much. You're a good chauffeur. You're good at what So you there's no good or bad <laughs> chauffeur. It's a chauffeur is a fucking chauffeur for God's sake, all right? Uh, first of all, we're going to visit the Nika Whiskey Distillery. So one of the only two Nika distilleries and one of them is here in Sendai. And then after that, we're going to visit a winery that is the only winery here in Miyagi. And I just opened two years ago. And I don't know if I could do that as I'm driving though. See, that's the downside to being an incredible chauffeur. No, no drinks for real today but we can drink and when I say we I mean I can drink hot springs whiskey wine and yes that's that's a lot of alcohol I sense another disturbing plan to have me killed by alcohol consumption and hot springs but I'm not gonna complain because that is a pretty good way to die I think my favorite thing about Nika whiskey other than the taste is the, uh, the logo which is of a Scottish guy with a beard uh, I mean, I've met people from Scotland and they do look like that. The good thing about this distillery is you can actually try the whiskey and we're going to be doing a tasting session in a minute. So how many barrels are in here? So there are 100 barrels here. 100 barrels. And then they've got 25 storage buildings like this. 25? Yeah, 25. And so there's like, there's one here and 24 more. And 100 multiplied by 25, 2,500 barrels. It's good maths. It's like it's like a vault, a giant vault or something. Yeah. I suppose it has to be, given how long they're in here. Yeah, obviously, you know, many of them stay here for like about 12 years. Some mm. of them maybe older than that. It's cool to think all these barrels will one day be in glasses around the world. People relaxing over a quiet drink in the evening. Are you ready for whiskey tasting? Oh, I'm ready for whiskey tasting. Yes, come on in. Oh, wow. Whiskey tasting. It's like a seminar room yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks very, very good. Yeah. 55%. 55%. <laughs> <laughs> I've only just had my breakfast. Better than morning coffee to wake you up. So my taste buds are on. They've been ignited. This is bit. the first thing we've done today, right? Drinking yeah. whiskey. <laughs> We're going to a winery. We're going to drink sake during dinner, and then yeah. we're going to an onsen where I'll probably drown. That is it. Just by <laughs> drinking just so much alcohol. <laughs> I've been on a lot of sake brewery tours over the years. I always find them very just boring, really. They just take you through a dark room and go, this is where we make Nihonshu. But that, that was really good. The tasting session was amazing. The smelling of whiskey, if you can't drink like real troll. And uh, the room with all the barrels in was pretty awesome as well. No, it was a really good tour. I highly recommend it if you're into your whiskey. And now it's time for some wine which is going to be a difficult thing to do given the amount of whiskey I've just drunk. I don't, I don't, doesn't seem like a safe thing to do. No. Aki Winery was started in 2015 by local architect and entrepreneur Chikafusa Mori in the aftermath of the devastating tsunami. When Chikafusa saw buildings he constructed being washed away by the sea, he felt moved to help the region recover. He noticed that while the region had an abundance of great food, it lacked any good local wine and thus set about designing and building the first winery in the whole of Miyagi Prefecture. He chose Aki for having the ideal climate, with a valley bringing in fresh mountain air to help cultivate the grapes. However, upon arrival, to my delight, I discover he's also selling cider, which is usually disturbingly rare in Japan, and I leap at the chance to sample it. So this cider actually won an award earlier this year in Japan's first cider competition, the Fuji Cider Challenge in Tokyo. This one, the Dolce won the silver award and the Brute won the bronze. And that's pretty impressive considering you guys have only been going, what, a year or two now? That's pretty impressive. What's, yeah. the, what's the secret to your cider success? The secret is we're using the best apples. From local farmers? Yes. It's all about quality control, right? I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't. You're not. I'm just enjoying the cider. <laughs> My, I'm, you just like cider. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently just full of whiskey and cider, <laughs> which isn't a good mix of things to have. Really. Yeah. So Akiu is a hot spring resort, and what you find is a lot of Japanese ryokans, traditional inns, they put a lot of effort into their gardens, and this is no exception. This is a hotel called Ryokosuite, and they've got this magnificent sprawling garden built onto the side of it, filled with a bamboo forest, streams and rivers filled with koi carp, and it's really popular to come here in autumn 
and just enjoy the colours. Uh, and also in spring as well, during cherry blossom season. And you can see why. You can see why people are sat by the windows of the hotel looking out across the garden. It really is a beautiful place to just walk through and relax and take in the seasons. So into the hotel room. We are on the 11th storey of the Rio Khan. Uh, so we've got some beautiful sweeping views of Aki. Pretty big actually. This is pretty big uh, for a Rio Khan room. Usually I just get like the one room. Uh, but today we come in here. So this is quite a rare thing for me anyway. Uh, usually when I stay in Rio Khan's, uh, I get a futon. I end up sleeping on the floor. Here we've got bed. And also, there's two. I'd like to point out, Riotoril has his own room, so uh, he's not going to be in here, thankfully, because he snores. It's horrible. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a nice table here where I can sit, relax, and enjoy the view. And in fact, this Riokan has an onsen, a hot spring, that is built into the river down below, um, which we're going to check out later, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, but no, it's uh, one of the best views I've had from a Riokan. The, the views are absolutely beautiful. So I'm in my hotel room and uh, Riotoril's in his. Uh, we've, got a, we've got dinner in about an hour or two, but I'm a little bit hungry, so without Riotoril knowing, I snuck out for Lawson's and bought chicken on a skewer. Hell yeah. I'm gonna enjoy that. To be fair, I am completely full of wine and whiskey. One thing I forgot to show you guys earlier, the key to the room, it's massive, look at that. This key, it's huge. It's like the key, it's like a key out of Silent Hill or something. Ridiculous. I'm gonna enjoy this chicken and then it's off for dinner. This is the first of two skewers that I'm gonna eat. Um, yeah, don't judge me. So it's been a long day of drinking, but here we yep. are, finally dinner time, and yep. uh, you're looking a lot more stylish than I am, although better t shirt. Oh, yeah, tacky, crappy t shirt. Whoa, buy, yeah. don't, don't uh, rip out the and, and, merchandise. Oh, I'm with you. you see, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of like you know, just talking about your t shirt, how crappy <laughs> it is, or fashion style. See, um, you know, and yeah. give us the rundown then. We've got a kind of a seasonal yeah, array uh, of dishes here. Sure, we've, seasonal everything. Uh, we've got uh, this is steamed sea bream steamed and also shellfish. Shellfish, yeah. The thing that stands out the most for me is this bowl of. Mushrooms, seasonal mushrooms. Yeah, and like every going, every variety of mushroom. Yeah, and we're going to ever. use this, and we're going to like actually put into this hot pot, pot later on. Ah, right. Yeah, the mushrooms are hot pot. pot. Actually, we got appetizer box. Yeah, the us. so when you have dinner, real calm. The thing that stands out the most is usually the appetizers that are put yeah. before you. Uh, they're usually very beautifully prepared. Mm. As you can mm. see here, we have lots of tiny little dishes uh, in this box. Yeah. <laughs> so what have we been doing in the last uh, few hours? We've been kind of. What, instead of okay, we actually, we, oh, luckily, we're, we're putting in a separate room this time. And uh, yeah, you're snoring. It's like sleeping next to a fucking bear or something. So we've got to get up at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning to go in the onsen. Uh, the reason we're going so early is we can't go in and film when there's other customers, obviously. And the, the onsen actually opens at 5 a.m. There's people that actually go in at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, they are. And they are. Ridiculous. They are. But um, so we need to go in we're going in an hour early and uh, yeah, make the most of it. So hopefully I'll survive getting up early. I, if I get up before like eight o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm screwed. I ring you. <laughs> you'll be fine though, you get up at oh, four like, every day. And Keep... you're Japanese, Japanese people don't need sleep, they're magic. What do you mean? <laughs> I, like, what, what do we do, like what's so special about All this? Japanese people I know can get by on like five hours sleep a day and be like normal but functioning be, people. I think because you, you only know people who are like over 70 years old or something. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, you. friends. Yeah. Like you, yeah. <laughs> so it's 4 a.m. in the morning, and I apologise for my morning face. Fortunately, it's quite a dimly lit corridor, so you can't really see it. On my way to meet Ryotaro in the onsen, uh, I'm feeling... Actually, I feel pretty good. I don't know why. Maybe it's the anticipation of diving into a nice hot spring that's keeping me alive this time in the morning. There he is. You look like a boss, some sort of video game boss battle. Oh yeah. Past. <laughs> like just waiting for his last day, right? It's like, yeah. Also, also, this is the indoor onsen. Um, indoor onsen. This is the indoor onsen they've got. And also they, they actually have an outside, an outdoor onsen as by well. By the river. And by the river, yeah. And, oh, what are uh, we waiting for? Let's go. Well, let's go. Through this door. Wow. Very nice. 
Oh, it's so nice. Honestly, you can see all of a sudden why people get up at 5 a.m. to come down here in the morning. We're, we're alone now. It's 4.30, we've got the whole place to ourselves for 30 minutes. It's weird to think there's a whole building filled with 100 rooms stuffed full of people. True. And we're the only ones down here. Uh, but it doesn't open for half an hour. And then at 5 a.m. apparently lots of elderly people come down because elderly people love morning onsen, like really, really early morning onsen. It's really beautiful. We've got the steam rising off the water. We've got the sound of the river just behind us whooshing past. You can't actually see it because it's too dark, but you can certainly hear it. And it's just a really nice way to start your day. I don't think I could do this every morning, but it is, it is a nice way to kick things off. And then after this, of course, gonna dive into bed and sleep for about six hours and then not wake up until no, midday. No, 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 not six hours, a few hours. What? We're gonna have a breakfast. Well, we're not. We You're gonna have a breakfast. I'm gonna go to bed. Breakfast, no, no. bed. You're gonna have a breakfast because there's gonna be another alcoholic thing to do. Another alcoholic thing. We have another school. alcoholic thing. You said this was it. No, you no. Said, this was it. Whiskey, this... wine, Nihonshi, onsen, Chris goes to sleep. No, no, oh, I never said that. I never said that. Here he comes. <laughs> Beer for you. Beer in the morning. Beer. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Morning, morning, morning beer. beer. Honestly, I feel a bit of a wreck. It feels wrong having beer no, this early in the morning with you, my. You should feel right because I mean, it's been said that in Japan, like drinking, well, being able to drink beer is luxury. It means luxury. that you're having day off, you're enjoying your holiday. That's what it is. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's luxury. Luxury. Yeah. It's legal to do that. How's that? Tastes pretty good. Tastes weird though, drinking beer in the in the morning. Because I told you, it's, it's luxury. not something. You feel good. It's not something. I don't think I'm going to get used to <laughs> or intend to start doing. If you're into your whiskey, wine or sake, or just a cracking good hot spring, Aku is 20 minutes away from Sendai. If you plan on visiting the region, you can find the details of where we went in the description box below. But for now though guys, as always, many thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. <laughs> you should get used to it, and like, and this, you're truly alcoholic afterwards. Encouraging me to be an alcoholic? <laughs> what kind of friend are you? <laughs> what a ridiculous man. Why do we put him in these videos? Can we cover from the, the way this, this video is going to be incriminating evidence after I die. In a court, this video is going to be played back in front of a jury of people. In, during like, the funeral. <laughs> he wasn't even joking. He was genuinely serious. He was genuinely serious. Unbelievable. <laughs>